Today we have a vase ink and they are, are going to be presenting a vase. Uh, Narayanan is the CEO and he is going to be giving us uh, the rundown on this new program and some really uh, exciting updates that are going to be happening. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and turn it over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, I'm just going to take a minute and share this, share my screen as well. There we go. All right. Uh, awesome. Uh, so good morning to everyone and um, whatever time zone that you end up watching this on YouTube, uh, good day to you as well. Um, so my name is Narayanan and I'm the CEO of Avas and um, today we are kind of going to do uh, talk about the Avas AAC app, what we what we have built, some of the new features that we are going to ship out, and um, some of the new kind of just breakthrough things that we're kind of like working on and trying to see how we can kind of almost revolutionize the space of AAC, uh, and so um, all of those come together in in a coherent form during during this presentation that's going to be my aim uh so just give you a background um the word avas means voice in hindi hindi is one of the largest spoken languages in uh, uh india and uh, we started we built avas as the first aac product in the uh, in in india uh, back in 2010 so i'm so right now i'm based in india uh, but we have um, like, but we work kind of like 24 hours in terms of time zone. Um, so ours was actually a device, and this is one of our users, Rohit. Uh, this was the first device that could be mounted on a wheelchair. It was right around the time of the iPad. So you kind of, we kind of built it out ourselves and uh, mounted it on wheelchairs and other, uh, kind of, uh, equipment. And over a period of time, we also evolved as a business. And now we move to a model where ours focuses mainly on software development, software innovation. So uh, our, our product is a software app. Um, and you can see one of our customers drew uh, here with the Avaz app. And so Avaz is an app that can be used on your phone, uh, on your Android phone, iPad, iPhone, um, and hopefully soon on Windows as well. Um, and again, it's a... Uh, it's a it's a program that works across seamlessly across the devices. So what you see on your iPhone, you'll see the same thing on the iPad. And if you have an Android device at home, for example, the family has an Android device at home, they'll be able to see the same thing. So it's kind of works seamlessly across different platforms. So it's that way is it's kind of accessible and affordable as well. So we have different pricing options that I'll touch upon in a minute. Um, and like I said, while we started from India, uh, we put out our first app on the App Store in 2012. But since then, we have grown significantly and we have a significant glo global presence. In fact, uh, a huge number of customers come from the U.S. school districts. Uh, but Chandra and I were just having a conversation there. So we have a lot of people in Oregon using it. Uh, we At ATIA this year, I met folks from Nebraska using it. Uh, obviously, uh, South Carolina is a huge like uh, it's kind of like East and West Coast that we are able to kind of like service quite uh, uh, service the entire range of the U.S. and obviously across the con different continents in terms of we have support different languages and different dialects as well. So we are able to kind of um, address a huge uh, market in in terms of just quantifying it, right? So almost um, close to three million words get spoken out like get communicated every month on ours. So that is almost 3 million thoughts getting communicated that would not have happened before. And so that's 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 a number that we kind of keep striving to improve, keep striving to increase. Um, and, and also provides us with a lot of inspiration within the team as well. Um, so we do support multiple languages. So English, different accents of English, French, Swedish, uh, Vietnamese, a lot of Indian languages, Tamil, Telugu, Marathi, Hindi. Uh, we also do um, Faroese is a language that one of... So a lot of these co uh, collaborations have started coming from parents reaching out to us 
and saying, so we had a, uh, we just, we just celebrated our 10th year anniversary of our French app because a parent in France found out about ours and wanted and contacted us and wanted us to collaborate with him to build a French vocabulary and a French version. So we now have a French version that's doing well in Canada as well as France. So that's kind of like how we've kind of, a lot of these are ground up things that customers come to us asking for us for a language and we've built that out uh, working with them. Uh, and they kind of bring in some of that expertise within that country. So they may bring in a speech therapist on board, they may bring in someone else on board and then we kind of build that uh, language system or the vocabulary for them. Uh, we hope to have the Italian and Dutch and German versions also soon. Oops, sorry. Um, and I uh, also wanted to kind of highlight and drop in some of these information at the start. So uh, the app is a $200 lifetime purchase. Uh, so it's a one-time purchase that you can do. Uh, if you wanted specifically bilingual vo vocabulary packs, that's a separate uh, purchase that you can do, uh, which which is right now happens kind of like an online purchase. So we'd send you a link and you can download the vocabulary. That's $100 for the bilingual pack. So for example, if you wanted a Vietnamese pack, uh, vocabulary pack or a Tamil in English vocabulary pack, so you kind of pay separately for that. Uh, we also offer subscription options, which is how we're seeing a lot of our growth in kind of different pockets of the, of the US where people are kind of subscribing it, trying it out at a much more affordable price. Um, and so these are our sub two subscription options as well. So we do have a free app on the App Store, which gives you two weeks of trial. So you have the two weeks to try out all the features. So you get, if you download the free app today, for two weeks, you'll be able to use all the features of the paid app. Uh, kind of, there no, no, it's not like a demo version. It's an out and out full version that you'll be able to use for two weeks. And after that, you can either subscribe or do a full purchase. Uh, I also wanted to highlight that uh, we have a 50% sale coming up from April 1st to April 8th. So go through this demo. If you are interested, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to kind of help you make the purchase as well. If not, you can just purchase it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, uh, whichever is kind of convenient for you. And... Um, for professionals, we do have uh, options to kind of give them an extended extended evaluation period. So like like I said, we have a two weeks trial. Uh, if you reach out to us, just drop us a note with saying eco voices and drop us a note with that subject line. Um, we'll kind of extend that for like a three month period for you to trial it out with students, trial it out yourself to kind of compare it with other apps as well. So um, that's a quick uh, uh, kind of like covering pricing, covering some of our background story as well before I jump into the demo and also showing you some of the future updates and some of the AI features that we're building. Um, I'm not able to quickly switch to chat, so I'm going to rely on Chandra to... Um, yeah, we were just kind of talking about the languages that um, people have. Uh, it looks like Spanish, Russian, and Ukrainian are some of the languages that they have. So, okay, so I'll make a note of Russian because we do uh, we do have one in the works. Um, so yeah, Russian is something that we can um, uh, we can kind of like if if there are people who are interested, just do drop us a note and we'll be able to kind of uh, see how we can build a version for them. All right. Awesome. So I'm now going to switch over to my app and okay, yeah, and and give you a demonstration of the app. Uh, so this is the um, so if you download, uh, so I should probably also put the date and time right. Even this is going to be watched for maybe a few decades. Uh, so as of 20th March 2024, if you're going to download the app from the App Store, this is what you will get. This is what you'll see. Um, once you install the app and kind of sign in, uh, this is the um, kind of the grid set, the vocabulary and the features that you'll see. Um, this is the 40 pictures per screen grid size. And um, I'll, I'll go through this and some of the features here and then also showcase some of the new things that we are working on. So I'll start off by creating a sentence. I. So when I tap any word in Avad, what? 
there is this zooming in animation and i want to take a minute to explain some of the thought process behind it so we initially built it out for kids with autism to get that visual reinforcement and that has been a huge um uh, like that kind of like the design decision has had a huge impact because a lot of kids with autism have found it very useful with that uh zooming in animation again it's a setting you like most settings and features in avas you can turn it off you can turn off that zoom if it's too um disorienting for kids uh but once we started uh sharing and talking to assistive technology specialists and ac people ac experts and showed them that feature they also highlighted that how this was useful for a lot of kids with cvi or even um kids with um uh, uh, hard of hearing kids who are hard of hearing so they could see that visual reinforcement being useful for them and so that's that's something that we've kind of also spoken to people and experts and figured out that that's another use case for um that zoom feature and so i can create a sentence if we go ahead and say ah food want, uh let's say on some drinks i want coffee coffee and you'll see that at any point in time i can tap on the top left there's a keyboard button and i can tap at that tap that at any point in time and i can switch to the keyboard so there's always like a one tap access to the keyboard from any point anywhere in the app and that's kind of important like that's almost like a core belief in the team that we want to kind of move people towards literacy as well so that access has to be there really simple and quick access should be there so i can say i want coffee and you said that the prediction comes up with the same pictures that was in the picture vocabulary and you can um uh let's say coffee and i can see oh so in this case the keyboard letters are also highlighting uh, are also zooming in you can turn that off uh, separately so i can say i found coffee oh. in cookies k so it's going to predict the next word as well as the current word so cookies and then i can tap on this button to speak it out i want coffee and cookies and what i can also do is i can tap on share and share this as an image or share it as a text right so i can send so when i send an image it goes like it will basically um let me see if i can do this so i can like i'm going to just paste it into notes uh so it gets pasted as a image on notes or if you wanted to paste it into your word doc google drive all of that or it can go as an attachment on email uh the nice thing is that it goes with the same symbol set and so it's uh and the text and again it's a setting you can turn off or turn it on so we've seen it getting used sometimes in school in terms of adding like doing something on ac and then on your on avas and then kind of posting it into um like a word doc or a google doc itself um all right so again that's a setting you can change it you can tweak that uh, as to if you want just the text or the image one of the most common use cases that we've seen is that um uh, we've seen people use it on phones and then do a whatsapp message so that's kind of like another um aspect to that um awesome so then i'm just going to move back to the picture vocabulary and show you something kind of uh, give you a quick tour of the vocabulary as well so uh, th this is the home screen and on the bottom left you'll see a quick folder quick and you'll see all of the functional fun communication phrases housed in this so i can say i i want to use avas i want to go to the toilet i don't um, i need a break all of those kind of functional communication phrases are housed here uh if i go back home so home is uh, in the home folder you have a set of four words that are always accessible and there's a shortcut to the home screen and then there are these uh, folders that are kind of laid out with more french vocabulary right so i showed you food and then there is uh think things and then there are like some pre created topics and i'll get to topics in a bit uh, uh topics is something you've just kind of given a taste of what what all is possible now uh, we use the symbol sticks images so there are about 45000 symbol sticks uh, in the different kind of symbols here and you can search through them and we have a very easy way of searching and kind of like selecting an image and we the color coding that we follow is again uh, something similar and standard in terms of the fitzgerald color coding scheme that we have within the app which is pretty much standard across most of the other aac apps as well 
Now, um, one, uh, so so one of the things that we've been we we started discussing and kind of came out from how uh, students were finding challenging and finding it challenging to connect with their AAC. So one of the things that we were kind of like we were talking to speech therapists, we were talking to uh, people who use ours, and one of the common challenge, a thread, common thread that came about was that some of these voices that get spoken out while we have moved into things like child voices, teenage voices, all of that, but still none of those emotions really convey, and none of those word tones actually convey any emotion, right? So I am I can be excited or I can be angry. All of that is a part of my communication, part of who I am, but none of that comes through from any of our AAC uh, text-to-speech. Uh, and, and that's a huge draw, drawback, right? So imagine a teenager being angry and sounding like, uh, let me say, uh, so this is how I would sound angry, right? So uh, if a teenager, uh, if today, this is how it sounds. Uh, let me give you topics, a, examples. I've recreated some. I am so pissed off right now. This is absolutely not at all pissed off, right? <laughs> I am so pissed off I, right now. I'm going to be sounding so dull when getting pissed off. But I actually sound like this, right? I am so pissed off right now. <laughs> That's great. This is my favorite, I, my favorite feature. I love this. And, and so we, and again, uh, I, I want to highlight that this, we, we really didn't pull this out of our hat, right? We, we were kind of seeing the impact that text-to-speech has, and there is enough literature on it as well. Um, and then we started building out a feature. We gave it out to about close to 100. We sent out invites to 100 beta users. We had a bunch of beta users test it. These were autistic adults. These were speech therapists. They were parents of children with uh, AAC users. They all kind of tried it out, gave us feedback. And and like one, one of the parents shared feedback that the child was finding it more com confident to use uh, AAC, use ours itself, right? So, and imagine like one of the common things, like imagine a teenager, right? So, and then... Uh, you are just making them feel more connected to what is supposed to be their voice. Yeah, right. I wanted to make a comment about that too. Is um, I, I worked with a number of groups of uh, Ogcom users uh, in in groups, and the first thing that they would always do when they got together um, in their face to face meetings was start cursing. And so in our yeah. schools, we try to say, oh, well, I don't think that's appropriate to have it on a device, um, but mm -hmm. everybody needs to be able to express yeah. themselves. And yeah. uh, so it's part yeah. of life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Like we like um, when we are speaking, we are able to sound angry. <laughs> so you're never, I've never rarely heard a AAC user sound angry. Uh, they can make those body uh, gestures but uh, so that's that's something that we were kind of like looking at so so we've we found this to be again a way to again look at how can you make the uh, give that control to, to the AC user give them the ability to communicate you were going to put you were going to play the yeah right before I interrupted you I'd like to oh, hear okay. that one yeah. I'd like to hear that one yeah right okay perfect um, and this is one of our most common ones. Uh, so we had at ATI, we had this, um, we had this small folder with like dad jokes. So you could then play a bunch of dad jokes. You could do different fun things as an activity as well, right? So there's so many. So one of the uh, ideas that Lauren Enders gave us was that we could use it for modeling emotions while uh, in a story. Tell her, how do you think that character is feeling? And maybe you talk about emotions then. So those those could be like a different ways of using this um, in, in kind of intervention itself. Right? And I would imagine that if they, if the AAC user feels like they're truly expressing their emotions through this tone, it might cut down on some behaviors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, that's absolutely right. And I, and I think, well, we we just rolled this out in December, so we are now looking at uh, different kind of usage patterns and data, and so so we are kind of excited to see more people use it, and we'll be able to kind of get draw some more patterns out of it uh, as well. 
Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to go back and um, uh, give you a quick um, demo of some of the other features um, in the app. So uh, given that Avas, so this the Avas vocabulary is quite vast uh, in terms of kind of the words and and the folders. So we what we did was we built a simple search feature within the app, which is very easily accessible. And so, for example, if I want to, I, on the bottom right, if I tap the search button, I can, let's say, type for the word, I'm gonna say, let's say I'm going to find the word dog. And it can show me where the word is, but if I tap on the C path, it, what it does is it kind of masks the screen and almost takes you, uh, hand holds you through that. Uh, so it's almost like things practice of modeling that you can animals you can do and so it gives you a small hint and, pet animals and gives you how you can kind of like how to go through that and then you can see the path on top saying things animals pet animals so it's almost like a very easy um uh, kind of like a navigation and also potentially exploration tool and we've seen it where speech therapists have kind of kept it on so that their teachers can kind of quickly see and where the word is and then help in modeling as well and given that ours is somewhat like the vocabulary system might be new to people this is an easy way for them to kind of like get into the system and understand where the words are how the words are located etc arranged as well um so again uh, looking at features that we've built based on what people have actually wanted and kind of like that's that's kind of like core of some of our feature development uh itself uh, i'm just gonna go back and Right. So um, I want to quickly show you uh, some of the features in terms of the keyboard and then jump into modifying and editing the vocabulary. Before I do that, I'll just quickly show you some of the keyboard specific features. Um, so uh, like I mentioned that you do have prediction with pictures, so which is kind of something that comes over from the picture mode, uh, but you can also turn that off. So, right. So if you can just have it, you uh, so again in, Avas, most of the things can be controlled that way. So if I go to prediction, I can say don't predict with pictures and we'll hide those pictures. And so you kind of um, can have that setting. Uh, I'm also going to just make a setting where don't. Um, so in the keyboard, I'm not going to enlarge. The... So now uh, what I wanted to highlight here in Avas is that you. I. Uh, so you Was. get the next word prediction and you also get G -O -I. current word I going. And what it also does is a phonetic match. So for example, I can say I was going out, out to two T H. So now the. suppose if I wanted to type out the word ocean and I happen to spell it O O S H H A. A. So it here predicts the word ocean. Uh, as uh, if you see in the second spot and this came about when we were kind of working out with kids and working a lot of these kids were phonetic spellers and they wouldn't see these words come up on prediction so again uh, we brought this in as a feature where it would based on how it sounds uh, you can kind of type that out one of the other examples that someone gave me was that L a lot of people spell the word leg as G -E, e and you'll see that one of the that as kind of the top prediction um, as well. So phonetic match is something very unique to ours and none of the other AAC apps have it um, in their keyboard, uh, have it integrated with their keyboard. Um, so that uh, the other aspect to the keyboard is that you also have a favorite in the bottom left and you will see that we've kind of housed, so you can save a bunch of phrases that you can quickly access and these are like quick access phrases we have we come we put in some default but you can add in your own folders you can add in your own kind of like arrangement as well all of those aspects you can kind of um you can save your messages so for example if you had a school specific folder you can save different phrases that you want to use here and quickly access them so whenever you select something uh it kind of adds to no the way. message box automatically um, so that's that's kind of like a very quick 
to of the keyboard um i want to go move on to the picture vocabulary and show you how to customize the uh vocabulary itself any any specific question that i can answer before i get into that i uh, know i i don't see any questions um anybody uh, need to uh, uh, Michael, ask? yeah Michael, i think you're trying to unmute yourself oh, so it looks like there you go <laughs> thank you sorry i was just wondering how you um how, how you change the background on the vowels on your keyboard i don't oh, see how to do Oh, that's a like setting. Oh, okay. Um, if you go to menu and settings, uh, um, in keyboard, you will see a layout, and there is an option called highlight, highlight forwards. Got it. Thank so you so much. I love that. That is very helpful. The keyboard wow. is my vi I love the your keyboard. I use a lot with students, so it is a favorite for teachers and speech therapists. And so um, this is great. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, wonderful. Um, uh, maybe maybe for the benefit of the audience, can you tell us like one use case that you used it for? Uh, that'll be kind of also insightful uh, for everyone else as well. A case that I've used it? Uh, yeah, like you mentioned that you've kind of used it with some students or like the teacher. Yeah, the I mean, we, you know, we use in my school district, we try to do feature matching as part of our, you know, AAC assessment. And so any student that has literacy, you know, this year, this is the feature that <laughs> if anyone has, you know, some literacy already or um, is, you know, like um, has the ability, we, we, we pick this and they just, they do really well. The prediction, the symbols within the um, speech bar, the, um, like you said, the enlarging. Um, so yeah, we've had people really um, build up their literacy, combine, you know, um, symbols like in the other, the pictures like uh -huh. I want, and then they'll type out, you know, awesome. whatever thing, you know, specific thing they want, or just, they just use the keyboard. Um, okay. so because it's pick the visually supported, um, that's really been helpful for a lot of students. So thank, thank you. Thank yeah. You so much. Uh, Thank you. Wonderful. So um, I'm, I'm going to um, show how to kind of um, um, modify and kind of add words to the Avas vocabulary. And again, uh, to set some context, uh, when we started building, uh, designing Avas, one of our core uh, design principles was to ensure that customization can be super fast and super simple. Um, and uh, because we were looking at, so for example, there are not many speech therapists in India. And so you would expect parents and teachers to kind of program and add vocabulary. So you had to make it really simple. So, so I'll show you topics. I'll give you an example here. I'm going to go and add some topics. So anytime you want to program anything in Avas, you can tap on the menu button and tap on edit words. And once you edit when you here you can add new and i'm going to start off by adding a new folder someone just say um let's say favorite food and so what this does is um it hasn't found the exact match in our symbol sticks vocabulary so it's gone ahead and found it from the internet found an image from the internet and automatically put it here so you it saves you a bunch of steps so you don't have to go to a browser download it upload it back here all that is kind of saved within uh, saved by uh, uh, and done by ours automatically and then i can say choose something that looks uh, like favorite food and tap on save and then I, i'm going to just drag and move it like how i can rearrange items on the phone um uh, and now if I double tap on it, I have an entire page set that I can create. I'm going to tap and since it's favorite 
food. I think I have an idea of what all I want to add. So I just can add a bunch of items together. So let's say I'm going to add tea, coffee. And this is again, this is an example to show here. So let's say tea, coffee, pasta, pizza. I'm going to throw in some um, something healthy. And um, water. So what this does is I've just typed out seven, eight words, uh, just separated them by commas, and it has automatically picked an image, added <coughs> the kind of the color coding based on what's in the app already, and then put it here, added it here. And again, this is just a quick way to get started. If you think you, can, you want to change it, you can tap on it and then tap on change, and you'll get back to this menu. And let's say I want to pick an image from the internet. Oh, or I can take a photo using the camera or the gallery. You have all those options here. And I can tap on save. Um, you can also record a message here. So there's a record button and you can record a message. And this was important for us to have it right from the first version because a lot of the languages in India didn't have text to speech when you started. But now, um, this is kind of useful just to have like say a sibling record something or um, uh, you can record it with emotion for example so mm, all those options are there um, so I'm just gonna and, and I can then select a bunch of these words and maybe say hide it and so I can it doesn't like you can then reintroduce it to the student over a period of time all those are there they're already there it's just hidden so you don't have to delete them so that's pretty much like a very uh a simple way of programming the vocabulary you can copy paste it you can delete all of those things are available in the app and this is kind of like a very quick way to just add words into the vocabulary um i have yes. a quick question i'm sorry um for students with cvi like you mentioned a lot of times um we want to first use real pictures is there a way that I could use that select all and um, and then have the image be from the internet, like a real picture from the internet? Because otherwise we have to do it one by one by one. And it... Okay. Uh, we don't have that right now, but I'm going to take a note <laughs> and share it with my team. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That, that, yeah. Okay. This is awesome. Thank you got like access um awesome so i'm i'm uh so the <clears throat> we we now kind of um uh, taking this a step further as well and so I, i'm just gonna probably there's a good time to just switch and show you uh what we are working on so this is um kind of uh this is a version of the app that will come out maybe end of april uh 2024 uh this is the late it's it is a much kind of like a much uh it has a bunch of features it has a larger vocabulary uh op set of options as well i want to show you one specific thing that we are adding here and kind of just taking off from what we what i was showing so you have the option to let's say add a word and uh let's say i want to add um And again, the interface is fairly similar. Um, what I can do is I can change the picture and I can also like add in a GIF and kind of like increase the number of times it should show up. And let's say, uh, let's just say this, for example. And I want to tap save, right? And so once I do this, you'll see that awesome. when I do this, it kind of takes up that entire screen and you can, it will loop multiple times. You can change how much times it shows and then it goes back in. So that's kind of like, uh, that's something that's going to be coming up. Uh, I'm showing you a GIF, but clear. you can also, what you can also do is, uh, let's say you can add a YouTube video here. So I can add a YouTube video. You can, uh, we'll also have options to jump to a page. 
uh, so I'm going to just give you, so you can search for YouTube videos and kind of select, show me just like second, uh, five seconds to 22 seconds and just show me that 17 seconds clip. You just kind of enter all of that in and we will not show any ads. We will not show any recommended videos after that gets played. Just that snippet gets played. Um, so just to give you an example, um, demo. I have a demo. When you so, feel so mad. So this is how it, when would, you feel so mad. How it would look like, right? So. When you feel so mad. And so this is an example. This folder is also a pretty illustrative example. So you have a YouTube video. Um, you have uh, uh, buttons that are larger. So this is a 77 grid size, but these specific buttons are larger. And then you have a linked folder where you can uh, kind of immediately jump. So you already have a numbers folder somewhere. You can just kind of link to that folder directly. And you'll see that on the bottom row, all of those are kind of almost, it's like what we are calling as a frozen panel of core words. So you have a immediate access to different core words and some, say a special interest folder. So some of these folders are kind of like fixed that you will always have access to wherever you are in the screen, right? So uh, again, going back to the point of what is engaging to the child and at the same time, giving them access to vocabulary at different uh, kind of wherever they are in the app, right? So this is the home, home. now. So this is a 77 grid size. So it's much larger than the 40 that I was demonstrating, but it is somehow, it's kind of maintaining a core aspect of it. Uh, th there's a lot of, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, a large, obviously there's a much larger uh, core vocabulary on the homepage itself. Um, and then if you look at the quick, yeah. we've also color coded it slightly so that it's easier to read and go through it. Uh, because a lot of times adults find it very difficult to see a 77 or a, like, for example, we even built a 117 grid size. It's just very challenging to see and go through all of them at once. So you, we've kind of color coded it and just given a gradient in that sense. Um, and one, oh. one very kind of, uh, personally speaking, a very interesting feature that we've built is so, so, for example, again, if you're at, Food. if you have a student who's at a, who's the, just at a one word level as kind of communicating in one words and maybe they're communicating and motivated by some fringe vocabulary. And let's say, clear uh, soup. They talk about soup. What you can do here, if you're in the home food folder and you're talking about soup, you can immediately tap on actions. And so they have ac actions. access to core words. But they also have access to context specific core words. So I'm going to show them only actions which are related to food. So they are not, they don't see the entire 77 grid size of all action verbs at once. If you're at food, they'll see contextually predicted uh, action words or contextually predicted Describe. food words, right? So, so that's kind of like show, uh, you'll see crunchy, smelly, all of that. You'll not see the entire grid. What we have done in the back end is basically all the words are there. We've just kind of hidden it for you, right? So it's immediately off the start. All the words are there. We've just taken a um, stance on hiding it. You can again, go ahead and unhide them, show them what you want. Maybe there are certain words that you want to show. So you can kind of just hit on edit and change all of that. So it's completely customizable, but this is a kind of like a starting point for uh, anyone who's coming up and starting to use Avas itself will have that access. So uh, the other kind of neat example is something like transport. transportation. And if I use, if I go to describe from the transportation, describe. Poster, you'll see um, slow, fast, dangerous. Uh, maybe there are kind of like, we can add more richer vocabulary there in uh, as well. So all of that gets um, uh, contextually predicted in that sense. We've built it. Uh, within Avas itself, right? So that's that's uh, home. That's something that's coming out in Avas, and I'll, I also wanted to showcase the topic. It's a much more larger option uh, set that we have. Uh, like for example, uh, payment. Thing. So payment. now we've kind of have things really uh, things that will have some core words, also some commenting, and then kind of the fringe vocabulary with respect to the topics folder itself, right? So all of that is going to be 
coming oh. out in the next version um in 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 within uh, a few weeks right so i'm uh i want to pause and i know i'm also keeping an eye on the time so i'm going to pause and ask if there are any questions uh with respect to the new uh, the new features and um i also want to show you one specific um uh, a kind of biling bilingual folder that we have, uh, bilingual vocabulary that we have, and also the AI feature that we have. So I'm just going to pause here for any questions. Um, I have a to... quick question. Go oh, ahead. sorry, Deb. No, no, you go first. Go right ahead. Um, in the YouTube links that you showed, um, so sometimes we'll use with our natural language um, learners or Gestalt language learners. Um, in that link, can the button be a symbol, but then it it opens that nice Demo. large YouTube clip? Yes. So, for example, when you feel one, so mad, the first one is actually a symbol. Uh, I okay. can change. I can change that. Um, so I can change it to hand. So instead of this, I can have some other image as well. So you can change it. But the but the video will still be yes. there. So uh, okay, so gotcha. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can see that from here. Awesome. Thank you. And Deb, you had a um, question. My oh. question was about the options for share and uh, being able to send back and forth. Maybe you touched on this and my brain's been going in a lot of different directions with possibilities. But um, it, like for a low tech option of the board as a backup in case my technology goes out, yeah. what is the easiest way to be able to print out um, a copy of the board or to have that available? Um, yes. Um, so uh we spoke to a lot of speech therapists and they used to take screenshots and uh, so what we built is a very simple tool um let's say i'm just going to take an example getting dressed uh you can see if you go to menu and tools uh you can just create a book a pdf uh with the tap of a button and you will see uh, the exact same layout and you'll see that I'm going to just zoom in here. You'll see it also references which page you need to turn to. Uh, it's almost like a small uh, hint as to go to page five for all the access. So you'll see all the, the entire vocabulary kind of printed out. So I've just done one folder, but you could do it. Uh, you could do it for kind of like whatever folder that you wish. And it's and then you can share it via airdrop, email, all of that. And it will be the same layout. So if I now change the picture size to like whatever, uh, 15 pictures per screen or 40 pictures per screen, it will kind of maintain that as well. So that's good to be able to have the same layout, the same things available at home as uh, yes. you would at school. Good for carryover. Yes. Thank yes. you. Uh, and, and just to uh, add to that, Kind of like carry over to even say home um what we've seen is that sometimes we've had a we have had parents uh so this the kid might be using um uh, an ipad at school but the parents might have an android device at home so what we also do is you can take a backup of the app uh so you can create a backup uh create a new backup hit a button and create a backup and then you can share that backup to like share it via airdrop, share it via email, and they can then restore the same vocabulary on their Android device with ours, and it will kind of look up, look like the same thing. So that continuity is there across platforms as well. Um, and uh, and and then if you want, or if you are a teacher and you've created a folder, you can also share specific folders so that you don't have to like do the same thing again for another kid. So if you've created one folder, you can just share it via airdrop to another uh, student device or any other way to share it as well. Um, That's great. Um, I did have a question. Yes. Do you have a high contrast version? Uh, yet? So uh, not, so 
not yet to be honest like so we do have an option which is kind of just it's like a dark theme it's not really a high contrast thing uh we also because symbol sticks we still are working with them we're still asking them to kind of create a high contrast symbol library that's not yet available so we we still don't have that kind of like an end to end high contrast solution but we do have themes for again for people to select um and personalize the how their avas looks and are you able to change the the background colors or the would you need to do it manually like every single one or are the... um yeah so currently uh, currently we have the option of you have to do it every single one but we want to kind of we are looking to fix that as well where you can select all of them and say all of these buttons give me one background color a particular damn background color okay. so yes that, that is something in the works um that should come out uh, it, it may not come out this update but after that that is something that we will do and in the keyboard can you change the keyboard colors so the keyboard colors no so uh, no we can change the layout not the colors yet okay so you mean uh, like uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, can you give me a example of how we're looking at like specific keys in a particular or like for high contrast options is that how we're yeah like it? to change it for high contrast or to change the um the vowel the highlighting on the vowels if you needed something with higher contrast or if you yeah. have a colorblind um yeah. yeah and i think i heard you say too that you had a student you were using with michelle that was um had cvi and so that's really where the high contrast piece comes in uh, for visibility. Yeah. It, are there any things that you use to create to? No, she is. Then she uses the dark mode right now. Right, that's the dark mode. So oh, dark oh, mode. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, what we call the outer. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I should have explained that uh, because yeah, it's would this. Uh, so this is like like I think one. Uh, we we can do kind of like make the keys a bit more brighter, but this is a this is absolutely a we built this out initially for eye tracking, so we do support eye trackers as well. Um, so this is kind of how this team evolved. Uh, some great, some nice neon colors would be good. Yeah, <laughs> high contrast. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um... And then my other question has to do with the bilingual part that you yes. want to show us next. So I'll just wait. <laughs> All right. So um, so I'm going to show you. Um, so I have um, a Vietnamese um, uh, bilingual vocabulary here that I'm going to show you. So uh, I think. Uh, so the way we have done it is that uh, you'll see that this is um, so. This is the English kind of like the same uh, grid set, uh, but the, on the bottom right you'll see a Vietnamese. Vietnamese a Vietnamese folder, and so it's a it's basically a button uh, a folder a button to that folder. Now, it's not a mirror image, so I'll kind of highlight that and say that it's not going to be a mirror image of uh, what is there in English, but it has all the kind of like the customized uh words and all of that was fully completely contextualized so let me give you an example of home i i um delete want and i can go to say some food món uh, ăn and đồ uống cha so we have uh, so we have a, again close to about 2,500 words customized in Vietnamese with all the kind of like the Go back. fringe, and, uh, a significant amount of fringe and core. And uh, we have, it's basically we've done audio recordings for each of those words and phrases in Vietnamese. And so we have a, a boy and girl voice option. We have a male and female option as well. Uh, we we built that out because that was a slightly higher quality option. Uh while there is text to speech, uh, but we've kind of kept this right now in terms of the uh, in terms of 
having a clearer audio message. There is, if you wanted to add the word, you might have to do a audio recording of the tech of the kind of in Vietnamese. If so, what we have seen happen is that a lot of uh, parents might add like speech therapists will rely on parents to add some words, and they may just ask them how to add it and use their voice recording. Uh, so that's that's kind of like a very uh, quick um, demo of the Vietnamese. I can also tell you what we are building on and, and hopefully coming out soon is that you'll be able to access this Vietnamese. So anytime you hit home, you home. You back on the home screen, back to the English plus Vietnamese version. We'll also have a version. Uh, we also have a setting by where by which you can, at any point in time, you can come back to the Vietnamese folder. So you have an option. Like for example, um, in the next update, um, you can have a favorite folder here, which can always go to the Vietnamese folder. So it's kind of like a shortcut to that language folder itself. So that's that should be coming out again in a few <laughs> in a in a month's time. Um, so that's that's kind of like how the this particular bilingual vocabulary, the Vietnamese, is structured, similar to some of the Indian languages as well. Mm. I'm going to stop here, and if you have any questions or any clarifications, I can kind of show that again. <clears throat> can you share with Vietnamese. us again the? I'm sorry, the um the list of languages that you have. Sure. Um, okay. um, So Indian, uh, I kind of put Indian as well. Like it's a Tamil, Telugu, Marathi, Hindi. I, I'll I'll update that too. So uh, will so. are they going to be having Spanish come? Ah, uh, uh, Spanish. We don't have one right now. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'll uh, uh, we we we're still working on one. To be very honest, like uh. We know what's there out, out there in the market, and we, uh, we kind of sometimes if people recommend ask us for a Spanish version, we say there are better ones in the market, and we kind of point them there. Um, gotcha. But we we still working on we still working on the Spanish version to be very honest on that. And um, the other thing that I've I've seen in some other apps or one at least is that they have like a bilingual um, option where it'll show the English and the other language on the same button. So mm -hmm. box, um, that was very interesting. Yeah, uh, so uh, actually, so what, what we're doing right now is also uh, we, we kind of, trying out some of those ideas so i'll just, just to give you one of the things is um uh, so that's that's specific to uh, uh like for example can you do automatic translation of like creating a message so uh just to kind of answer your question we don't have that but some of these features to make bilingual communication much more effective some of those things that we are still trying out and i think we still have a long way to kind of go ahead, go and kind of like offer a much, uh, I mean, like we can offer a much better bilingual version, but we're starting off with this right now. And, well, this uh, and it was the, pretty the seamless switching back and forth, and so that's yeah. that's a big deal. That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's the first thing we kind of, I think two things that we really optimized was for to have a very easy hmm. way to switch and uh, get back to the home screen and everything. And the second thing is just offering the set of words and vocabulary, right? Where the where in a speech therapist or the teacher doesn't have to sit and program everything in, in Vietnamese. And, and this is, we've developed it with in collaboration with a person from Vietnam, <laughs> with a team from Vietnam. So it's completely contextualized and it's kind of um, specific. That's wonderful. Um, I guess my, my only other questions would have to do with access. Yes. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly answer that and um, um, and then show you some of the one of the AI features that we're working on as well. Just keep keep that. That's exciting. Um, uh, so um, we so uh, in terms of access, 
we have uh, in the settings again we have an option for touch accommodation so you have the option to turn it on and then you can choose kind of like how what the specific motor needs are for the student in terms of if they have touch access if they kind of like drag and release all of those settings are there uh, with under touch accommodations uh, switch access uh, we rely on the ipads uh, settings so if you configure any switch with the ipad ours will kind of like respect that and you'll be able to use it with a switch setting uh, so it doesn't have customizations within the app um and um we also now in the next update you'll also have it work with i guess so like for example the ipad os uh, 17 onwards will work with the hero uh, i a camera out of the box itself so that's that's also if you add it as a Excellent. i think you've added it as, a, as an access one so that's that's another aspect to access um and uh, i'm just saying if i have to ask any uh, specify any further things with respect to settings um i think again uh, i want to give you an overview it's more like a taste into uh, and a preview of ours there is many more features to come in the kind of the new um in the new version uh, like i said we have uh, larger grid sizes we have the option for uh, youtube it's a new kind of like a vocabulary layout the other thing is also clear we have these things of like a jump to feel options so you can jump to a particular page all of those kind of features coming into ours itself um and so we're excited about that and i think one of the other aspects and again kind of try tying it back to our core guiding principle itself is that a lot of we've seen a lot of ac intervention actually um be more effective when the communicator is also involved and engaged right so that's how if you look at tones adding tones is kind of important because it gives them that connection to their app to their avatar to their voice um similarly some of the other like can you add words quickly so adding words quickly we didn't want a speech therapist to like go through one training session and then figure out how to add words into ours they they during a session if they want to add a word it should be quickly available to them so that's that's what some of our guiding principles said and so we wanted to take that a step further so at ati last year in 2023 we had kind of asked people for what they see as artificial intelligence and bringing some of these things on uh some of the uh ai features into ac what would they look like to see so one of the most highly requested feature was kind of just in time customization just in time um adding words into ours so we we went ahead and kind of built a small uh prototype and the idea here is that uh like the way you can add many words in ours by just typing out the list the list of words separated by commas what if you can add like uh a much more broader um uh, like a, a, a just a description right so i have a 12 year old who um loves the movie uh frozen and so create a vocabulary for me which is uh which covers their interest which covers some of the vocabulary that they have in the app which helps them talk about this specific um uh, topic that they are really interested in and so for example it creates a folder called frozen fun i'm just going to move it here and what it has done is has created about a 77 grid size under a minute right it's created these words it has it has arranged it in the color coding scheme it has given comments it has given images from the internet um it has put verbs it has put nouns it has put descriptors and if i tap on done and i'm and i can say i'm excited and then say let it go and so so it it just opens up so much more for the communicator 
and it saves so much more time for the teacher or the speech therapist right and and we can never build out folders that would be really um uh, like imagine building a folder for a 13 14 year old and you'll never we'll never be in sync with them right so <laughs> giving, maybe giving them the power of uh customizing and and maybe that kind of again helps them be more connected to the device connected to the app and saying this is my voice and this is what i want to talk about so it it kind of adds that power to their communication itself and so that's that's something that we're working on again i and uh, Chandra has shared a link on the chat. If you're interested in signing up for a beta version, we are working on something. So we'll have just join the list and we'll try and get to, get it to you um, in some time so that you can try it out and um, play around with it. But again, I will, I'm going to just pause here uh, and and would like to love love to hear your thoughts. So I know we're, we just have a few more minutes left, but yeah. can you tell us um, about the resources that you have available on your site. Yes. Uh, so we do. Um, so we do have a huge um, um, kind of a knowledge center on our website. So avazapp.com slash, slash support uh, will get you to all the material. Um we also have YouTube channel where we have YouTube uh, videos, some playlists, all of that. Uh, we send out, we very uh, religiously send out a weekly newsletter uh, with uh, different kind of topics, covering different topics, covering kind of some of the uh, new features, all of that, uh, and kind of almost looking at some of the new things in AAC and um, intervention as well. So newsletter would be another way to kind of like keep in touch. Um, training resources, we also do a lot of these training pro uh, demos. So we regularly do like an hour, uh, like a 45 minute to an hour demo for school district teams, AT teams, um, AT centers, uh, or sometimes even like a parent has discovered ours, they want that school team to be trained. We do that as well. So pretty much covering all of those uh, aspects in terms of um, training. So if you have hours and you need our help, we very, we'll be very active to kind of like reach, uh, to respond to you and kind of sort that problem out for you. That's um, wonderful. Um, I guess we'll open it up to everyone else. Do you guys have any more questions for Narayan? And any thoughts on this kind of this AI based feature? I think that's amazing. <laughs> I think so too. I'm really, I signed up, I filled the Google form already. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm all over that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I love this. I think this is a game changer. And to be yeah. able to pull all of the Taylor Swift vocabulary into one spot, I mean, how the coolest kid ever. Uh, yeah. And so with this, could how would the access to this be? Well, can you show me it says, oh, it's in topic. So the homepage is uh, still yeah. the normal core. Yeah, there's a folder. Oh. Got it. That's yeah. perfect. So, topics. Yeah. Right. So we, we are now So I think one of the conversations that we're having with um, maybe talking to again, uh, one of our uh, uh, advisors and they were suggesting that maybe have this access to this AI feature only in specific folders so that people don't just go, don't go ahead and like keep adding words everywhere. So maybe we restrict it to certain folders and that could be a starting point as well. Um, yeah, no, I think that's great. I think that's frozen fun. <laughs> well, especially for lesson specific, um, that's great. A teacher could just go in there and pull up some relevant uh, vocabulary really easily. That's amazing. Yeah. And and I think, um, like, uh, obviously, like, this is right now a first cut and it may not be appropriate. But I think we what we want to do is, like, give them a base to, like, really get started so that they don't have to figure out what are the, like, fringe words to add. Like, maybe they can, they will kind of, like, <laughs> imagine trying to 
think of the fringe words you'll it's uh, and with the, in a time constrained environment it's just we don't need to think about all these that's why some of these technologies exist i love that i will tell you my biggest issue problem mm -hmm. solution sort of all together for this yes i have found that the need for communication devices is when the child is escalating and i want that to be as quick and as quick and accessible as the child can be the fewer screens a child has to navigate the less behavior you're going to have and it really 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 i'm not a big fan of temple grandin but perhaps the smartest thing that i think that she said <laughs> has to do with communication. If you don't have if you don't have communication, you're going to have behaviors. Um so um yeah. So it, it having it it's the it's the one that someone said years ago about uh, a computer scientist complaining about Microsoft. There are too many screens to go through to get to what you need to do. You should be able to talk to the computer and have it do what it needs to do. Communication devices need to be, it's durable, it's here, it's right here, what do you need? So, and the screens, it should be quick to access. So thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's a great point. And I think- um, So Michael, so, were uh, you saying that it checks off the boxes for you? Some of them. And okay. I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. And I have this conversation with my parents all the time, and that it has to do that something is coming up. You're here, but the communication device is in your backpack on the other side of the room, and you have the issue right here, right now. And your voice is so. Whatever we can do to reduce those steps, to make it. I'm going to keep my communication device with me because it's really easy to use. And there's a and, plus side and to it meets my it needs. around because it's easy to use. And I find that I get more benefit from it versus, oh, you know, I have to go, I have to go take it out. I, have, I can't leave my child. I can't go over to, to the other side of the room, but we're done. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter. Right. So it seems uh, like these features will help it get used more often. So I mean, with just a couple minutes left, um, yeah. what would you like to add to bring it back around, Norana? Um, I think, uh, no, I, I, so um, maybe one of the, I think one of our kind of, uh, my key takeaway from what Michael's mentioning is also that you're not only looking at, um, uh, and this is where I think we are in sync, is that, you're not only looking at how easy is it for, um, or like how less navigation on fewer screens is there for the student or the communicator, but you're also ensuring that the parent is not intimidated by the device or the app, right? So I think that's one key aspect of like, can I model something really quickly? Or even if I don't, like, can I, can I not feel so... Um, uh, uh, like intimidated by using this piece of the overwhelm by using this piece of technology where I have to figure out uh, like I, I, why can't it be as simple as using an iMessage <laughs> like that's that's the or like any of the other apps that we use on a regular basis and we are able to kind of like use most of the Apple apps and all of that over a period and of time. knowing so, how quickly communication happens and how impatient people are for responses I think people waiting giving the uh, Ogcom user a time to create their message has been part of the delay but if something can come quickly and I can respond and it's more natural I think I think there's definite advantages there Chandra yeah, we've heard uh, over and over again that one of the big barriers to getting kids to use AAC at home is their their parents being frustrated or not knowing how to use it. And, and this has been incredibly simple. Um, so we really appreciate that. 
Uh, we are a few minutes over time. So Narayanan, I want to thank you so much for being here. This has been amazing. And I'm going to make sure that we get this on YouTube so that everyone who is on spring break right now can, can watch it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You so yes. Much. Thank you so much. Great features. Uh, it was a, yeah. It was a wonderful uh, meeting all of you. Thanks so much.